Hey everyone, thank you so much for coming um, and joining me for this session, which is basically an exploration of a theory we had with a friend. Hi, Michael. Um, we were throwing around a couple of ideas about uh, what we need to get them in their role. Um, and somehow Maslow's Pyramid of Needs came up in the conversation. I was like, huh, let's see, would it actually make sense to try moving the different parts uh, over um, and see if there is a result out of it? So, disclaimer, um, this is not a new system. It's um, an exploration of an idea, and thank you so much for joining me for that. I am Yulia. Um, I lead developer relations over at Infobip. You can find me on the internet as Julia the Step, and that is the best way of reaching me. So, to give a little bit of a background story, uh, because it's going to be a use case of what we've built over at Infobip. Uh, our developer relations program is pretty new, it's a small team, and um, I've been here for a year. For the majority of the time, it's been a team of two or three people. Uh, but let's look a little bit at the company first. So, we are a cloud communications platform, and now I can say the most connected one in the world. Long story short, if you need communication features into your application, you can use this. But there is something special about Infobip. Um, who knows? Who has either heard about Infobip? Oh, nice. <laughs> um, that's that's quite an improvement on the usual numbers. Um, so it is actually a unicorn based out of Croatia, and it all started in a small town called Budnian on the Croatian coast. Um, not unlike other companies, um, in someone's garage, so we quite uh, like showing that as a comparison. Nowadays, we are doing a little better. Um, that replaced the garage. Actually, it's next to the garage, um, sort of. And uh, that's our second office in Croatia again. And we are now a global company with over 70 offices worldwide. Uh, without boring you with numbers, um, in these 15 years, we've grown big um, and successful. But this success was a result of interacting with enterprise customers. So it was going for the big clients, the usual sales process. And we haven't really considered the individual users or developers for the majority of that. And now we are opening up towards self-service users, towards developer communities. And it is my team's um, and my challenge to see how we can move from a company that is successful but has not set up anything um, for the individual developer user towards a company that puts developers front and center and first. Um, yeah, as mentioned, communication channels and the so, from enterprise developers, and um, I'm actually happy to see Caroline in the audience today, uh, so thanks for coming. Um, we'll get there shortly. Uh, my philosophy around DevRel is to not look at them as consumers, which I know is quite common sense for us in this room, um, but when a company is set up very much enterprise focused, it's, there is a Gap that needs to feel, be filled with a little bit of education. I do think of developers as integrators or partners, um, so that's the light in which I'm going to view all of this. And um, actually, I was listening to a, a community books podcast the other day, uh, and I like liked how PJ uh, Haggerty summed up what our role in the world is would be, to be. Um, and I do agree that if we can look at these two, three things and cover them, we are all good. So are the developers getting what they need? Are they getting it efficiently? And can the process be optimized? 
all good covered. Um, the only thing we need to figure now out is what do developers actually need. And unfortunately, it's not that easy. Um, simple as a solution, yes. Uh, it's a seamless developer experience that we are after. Now, when we take it into implementation, it gets a little more complicated. Um, when I first came into the company, um, there was already an idea of adopting Caroline's uh, developer journey map. Uh, so we just carried on with it and uh, kind of twisted it in a way that fit our um, product stack and also um, rules at the time. But then we got a team of probably two people and absolutely no setup for self-service users. So just to give you an idea, no SDKs, no documentation, um, no GitHub. Maybe even the product stack is not quite set up for a self-service user. As in, you couldn't quite come sign up and just carry on. There was always a human touch, an email, someone helping you along. So there was quite a large gap to be bridged. Um, I'm happy to say now we have, uh, but it was a process. And then looking at this developer journey map, I was freaking out uh, because that's just, I'm looking at there and it's three to five years worth of work for the team we were working with and we had to ruthlessly uh, prioritize. And what I did, I took some colors and tried to color them in, in the order of um, what do we need to do fast, and what can we do? Um, so I went with orange for what I thought at the time um, we should start with. I know it's ambitious, but there we go. Um, then as a next step, blue, which no, currently doesn't really show up. And then the light color, still things that I, I believe are important, and everything in here is something I believe that we need, uh, it just really had to cut things back um, and prioritize first things first. So I'm going to leave it like that. And if at the end of this, once we build up the pyramid of needs uh, and the translation works out, then hopefully on the more basic levels, so the first foundational levels, we would have more orange. And as we go up higher in the pyramid of needs, then we had um, less or no orange and uh, more blue and purple. So, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, um, it's a pretty widespread concept, uh, which means uh, might have been disproven and disputed in the meantime, uh, but still stands as one of the um, main concept in human motivation. And Maslow says that people do have an interesting uh, need for self-actualization and to get to the top of the pyramid, uh, you would first need to fulfill the level of the level. So physiological needs first, then safety, um, love, belonging, community, after then self-esteem, and then you reach the top and self Let's try to sort of convert that into um, what it would mean from the perspective of what the developer needs when interacting with our products um, or our product stack. So I do physiological needs as a vital to survival or essential, like really do need it as a um, condition for interaction. And for that to happen, they need to be aware of our product. Like, if they don't know about this, they're not going to use this. So awareness first. Then they need to be confident that the product or tool does what they need for solving the current problem they are facing. And then does it work as expected? So is it a reliable product? And taking the different bits from the roadmap, um, for awareness, I do cover landing pages, SEO, and 
air cover, while well, not everything in there is what we in Denver do, but as a company as a whole, it does need to happen. And that awareness of community outreach matters. Once they are aware, then we move on to the is this what I'm looking for? And for that to be answered, I believe API reference first because they need to be able to see what is happening. Documentation. Sandbox or some sort of an environment where they don't have to invest too much time but are able to test the product out to its full feature. And this is actually something uh, that we've been working on and uh, improving it a lot, um, taking users out of the limited uh, way of using our APIs because in communications there is a certain risk with spammers. So we are responsible for our infrastructure and um, everything else said. So if we let spammers through, that impacts um, our relationship with carriers uh, and we just cannot let that happen. We'll also comply and across the board. Um, so it was a tricky situation to handle that. Um, but we felt strongly that we need to give people a chance to test the product through its fullest features uh, before they can make an informed decision. And into the informed decision goes also a pricing page, in my opinion, because coming from the enterprise, pricing is quite often custom, communicated by email or the phone call. Um, but when we try to shift that mindset to the self-service user, then we need transparency, um, whether it's about features, capabilities, or the pricing. And not least, uh, we also have the portal, so the whole experience that goes into interacting um, with the portal once you, are, you have created your account and logged in and making that fully self-service. And I also sneaked in a couple of things in here as use cases, case studies, and blog. Now, these aren't in orange because I, while I do feel like they're important, I would place them just a little bit further out um, because these are great for identifying whether this is the right solution for me. Um, so reading use cases should you give a pretty good idea about that. Um, case studies are great because you can see similar businesses, how they leveraged that certain technology and just fast track your decision making. And then I'm quite fond of everything content, so a blog had to be there. Um, I still believe that in the role, content is king. So the more, the better. And I do feel like it has placed in this conversation. Now, moving on to the next one, um, according to Maslow, that's security and safety. He explains it as people want control and order in their lives. So, in a development context, I interpret that as do I know what I'm doing? Is it traceable? As in, do I have an API transaction log? Can I see my API requests? What went wrong? Is the service up? So maybe I want an API status as well. Is support available? And also, all the compliance related things is my data set. And then coming back to the different elements, um, I decided to take API status. So first, let the developer know whether it's us or them, because I don't. I think there is nothing more frustrating than trying to debug something for two days and then realize that oh, the service is down. So it is not me after all. Um, change log. Also, something that's um, coming enterprise to uh, developers. Uh, I had to advocate for because that was also communicated with the individual client. Um, but once you go 
self-service users across the board. The change log A is important because well, we need to know what changed and it's um, pretty important. Um, I think it's also good to involve uh, the developer community in the product roadmap and we are actually planning to open up the product roadmap and communicate it externally a little bit better and sooner and more transparently. I keep on coming back to transparency um, because I feel like that is uh, the way to go with communities and as the case knowledge base, uh, I know I'm not saying anything new in there, but coming back to tooling, reliable, easy to use tooling, uh, and having support available. Now, as a second step, while uh, we have reliable tooling, there would be another layer on top of it, so how to use the tooling. Um, I feel like I can interpret the security as a I am confident that I can use the tooling for what I want to do. Uh, and then we get to the getting started guides, the code snippets, um, tutorials, and starter projects. And tutorials and starter projects are new uh, because that's something I pushed a little bit out just because I feel like having the SDKs and documentation and the bare getting started guides is what covers the foundations, and I'm going to keep coming back to it because um, when building every developer initiative from the ground up with a very small team, uh, we really have to make some tough decisions and cover the foundations, uh, which is how we spend the best of them. So next, we come to the social needs, um, which is interpreted as acceptance, belonging, and community. So probably it's not going to be a surprise that um, I have community outreach. Um, different things that play into an online community. So building out a forum, um, holding office hours, which isn't great um, because of capacity, but I'm very much fond of holding office hours and I've done it in previous jobs before. I can't stress enough how valuable I found them, both for the community and for us uh, trying to deal with the developer experience. Um, other things like newsletters, social channels, um, that would, in my view, still go in here because it's still a touch point with the developer community and uh, keeping that connection going. And the most important thing, I think, is the Champions Program out of there, which we are looking to build. So you can register your interest if you're uh, looking for that uh, right now. But we are uh, working on launching it. Um, and I do think that when doing self service and developers, as so many people have already said, throughout these two days that building communities is essential. Um, and that is what I'm trying to do with the Champions program as well. But first, um, just building a solid foundation for that to happen. And there's, so the reason why it is in uh, blue is because there were just so many other steps that they wanted to make sure are covered before we launch the program so that they can feel supported um, once they come on board and that we can genuinely provide a good experience for them as opposed to trying to balance out the conflicting priorities. And the fourth level um, in Meso Spirit that we esteem needs. So, appreciation, respect. And I carry over the Champions program in here as well, because I feel like it sits on both levels or in between. Um, and this is where we really do give back um, to our community and to support them and provide training. Again, training is great uh, due to planning and timelines. 
but I feel like this is a very good opportunity um, for connecting with people on a deeper level and actually giving back to them. So, um, organizing specific training, supporting them, maybe having them as guest authors, um, upskilling them, whether it's public speaking training, writing training, or tech stack specific training. Um, it is an opportunity to give back. But then also um, address the esteem needs um, and build up the confidence. So the bullet points are actually taken from Maslow's interpretation of um, esteem needs, and one of them is leveraging confidence versus feelings of inferiority. And I feel like that is where support and training be um, made. And then the fifth and fifth level and the top of the pyramid is the self-actualization or the growth state. Um, to be honest, I, I was struggling a little bit with this level and interpretation um, of it in a developer context. Um, but then it did come explained as a growth state. And in our context, I choose to understand it as helping them grow with us um, and amplifying their voices. And we have a couple of things for that. Um, as I said, most things towards the end of the pyramid would be either gray or blue, um, except for the startup tribe, which is in orange, just because thankfully I have Nicola who is running it, so that uh, fell out of the role planning. Um, but there are, we are trying to help them grow with us in multiple fronts. So one thing we're considering is um, certification. There's lots of companies out there um, where it can actually add for someone's, um, for someone's um, professional background. So for example, AWS certifications. Uh, be quite common. And from what I've seen in hiring processes, they seem to be uh, pretty well accepted. So, in that sense, um, that can definitely be a contribution for a someone's professional career. Uh, we also have a marketplace, so that is uh, an opportunity for developers to grow with us in the sense of they can build their, their own um, integrations or extensions to the platform and then monetize it on the marketplace. Uh, different angle still trying to help them um, scale their business. With the Startup Tribe, I mentioned we are a company out of coastal town in Croatia. We are actually a unicorn. Um, and I actually love the company's story because it's so inspiring how from a startup it grew so fast. We are still pretty much startup ish um, at 4,000 employees. <laughs> um, and we are trying to give back to the community and um, to help these startups grow with us as well. You can find people later on. And uh, ask questions about it, uh, but I'm quite proud of uh, what we've achieved there. And then champions carry over again, uh, because I believe we can take that to another level as well. For example, um, I'm not going to talk too much about it because Marianne has, um, my colleague Marianne, uh, has a talk just after this, explaining what we've done in Africa and the community we've built in there. Uh, but there are uh, community members who just are so involved that they want to take it to the next step. And then we are trying to now figure out a way and system to further support them uh, and see how we can give them um, more responsibility but also more reward uh, and see if we can turn that into something that helps them professionally as well. So, Does it sort of work? <laughs> um, I think this has been a 
and then where did we start? Because that's still a lot. Um, we started with awareness. Um, I'll be honest. When I first came to Infobib in like a year ago, we started going to first developer conferences, uh, and awareness was zero. So I still believe that, thankfully, in a post-COVID world, face-to-face um, -face time is extremely valuable, and we are trying to keep things up with that. Where I spend most of my time um, during the past year, and also what we are carrying on to focus on, is getting strong foundations, so that is making sure the product is developer friendly, it's set up on the back end to be developer friendly, like from billing, from uh, platform usage, everything to be self serve first, and then um, we can deal with the enterprise customers as their own value. Um, as the case, I'm quite adamant about having a great developer experience and um, about having. As the case of Chisnet, code snippets and locks. <laughs> I know. Uh, it, I, I'm not saying anything new to this room with that, but I think it's a good reminder that we do need the strong basics, uh, and that is what I'm focusing on. And then, community. Um, building out the community is the third thing um, I'm focusing on. The ambassador program normally would come later, but we've seen quite a lot of um, interest and people do want to get involved, uh, so we decided to move it forward. We're also building um, communities around the world. Again, Marianne is uh, next door, right up to me, so you can find out how that works. Um, and just building out um, a home for our online community, so that would be a place where um, it would not be interact in a more organized way than just Slack and Discord. Uh, so try and tighten that up and making sure that we keep tabs on what's happening and more have more purposeful um, engagement online with our community. And we are just starting, finally <laughs> enough. Um, that is our company's motto um, because of start fish aspect of it and things going fast and, and it always does feel like we are just starting and that uh, applies to our number of program as well. And with that, I thank you. Thank you so much for joining me for this exploration. Of my